Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision. I'm not sure if I prefer my eggs scrambled, poached or fried, but I certainly prefer them quick. Welcome to 2018 here on Chinny Vision, the first video of the year. Thank you for your support throughout 2017, seeing the channel grow. And uh, thank you to the people who purchased the Chinny Vision calendar as well. And if you've got your calendar on the wall, please tweet me a photo of that because it's nice to see them out and about. And there are just a few left, so uh, go to chinnyvision.com if you want to order one. Today we're looking at Quick Snacks, a 1990 game by Codemasters and of course the Oliver Twins. Originally intended to be programmed in two weeks, like fast food, but that didn't quite work out. And we're starting off on the Amstrad CPC 6128, initially on a proper Amstrad CTM 644 monitor. Just for a special treat for you. And uh, yes, yeah, so if you look at number one on the options there, keyboard ad controls. Perhaps the people who programmed this version were big fans of the Doctor Who story, Time Lash. Uh, off we go, and you can see it's a Pengu clone. Dizzy goes around, has to collect the items of fruit. You get uh, 100 points if it's flashing, or just 50 if it's just one of the stand items of fruit. You can move the ice blocks around. Now, my memory says that in Pengu, um, you have to press fire to move the ice blocks. Um, but on this, you just push against them, and you can crush enemies, trap them, and do various things. And power ups, power ups drop down, offering you various options. So that there you go. That's level one completed. Some jolly music plays when you uh, play the game. And then we're over to the bonus level, and this is done running on a 464 plus. Uh, if you've never watched any vision before, all the capture on this channel is done on the original hardware. And on the bonus level, you are on ice, in effect. Um, what you have to do is, you, when you start going one direction, you can't stop unless you hit something. So it's a question of working out how to tackle the puzzle in each bonus level. And there is a bonus level after each main level, and it's against a time limit, although you don't lose a life if you don't beat the time limit. Level 2, and the music in this game is really fantastic, actually. Um, really good, um, nice AY tune. And... That option there let me eat um, the op knife and fork option lets me eat the baddies. We're going to be careful with there's a time limit. Um, sometimes it's worth saving those power ups up uh, for when you've got a particularly troublesome bit of the screen to tackle. And you can walk um, or push blocks over the edge of the screen that wraps round, but the enemies can't wrap round by that method. So it's, a, it's like Pac Man where you can cross over, but in this version, the enemies can't follow you. Over the Spectrum version, this is a 1 to 8 k version, and you get to see all these extra graphics at the beginning, including the Dizzy Mob playing um, their music. The aim of the game is to rescue, there's four islands, and you've got to rescue um, your friends from each of the islands. There's five or six levels on each island. And the specy version is ostensibly the same as the CPC, except it's a little bit faster, but it lacks a little bit of that refinement of the CPC version. Um, although it's very, very nice. Um, same music as the CPC version. Graphically, I don't, don't find it as nice as the Amstrad version. Some of the graphics aren't too clear. It's not too bad. It's just coming over from the CPC version. It's, it's these penguins with a black on black. And then just the, the outlines are, can be a little bit hard to see. Minor quibbles. Um, plays exactly the same. Take note, there are 16 ice blocks uh, that run across the entire width of the screen. Remember that for when we look at 16-bit versions. 16 uh, character blocks going across the screen there. So I'm saving that knife and fork up there. If I can run into that when I need to. And now we've just got these... It's good. Uh, if, if you kill the baddies, they regenerate in a random location, so it's good to keep them trapped away. Although, on some levels, the ice blocks randomly vanish, and you can accidentally have uh, enemies running around the place. You've just got to work out how to tackle these, these puzzles. Uh, and you can wrap around like the main levels as well, so you can use that to your advantage. But if you get it wrong, of course, you'll just end up endlessly looping around. So it takes a little bit of thought, but none of these too difficult. None of them are too taxing. I 
Over to the Amiga, and uh, obviously much better graphics. A nice screen here showing the members of the Yoke Folk who you will be rescuing. Although on the 16-bit versions, unlike the Specky version, you don't get to see the Yoke Folk playing their, their band, which is a real shame with all that extra memory. You would have thought they could have done something like the Spectrum and given a little bit more polish on the intro here. I think I'm right in saying the Oliver Twins didn't uh, code this themselves. It was all outsourced to uh, friends of theirs and people they selected. They did the game design. So they did the game design. Obviously, they probably played Pengu many years before in the arcade and thought, that, that, that seems like a good concept. We'll borrow some ideas from that and make this game. Nothing wrong with that. That's how the industry worked in the 1980s. Take a concept, adjust it a little bit and uh, make something a little bit better. And this certainly is just a little bit better than that original arcade game. Let me get some backstory here on the Amiga as well as showing you what all the characters do. I've never quite understood why all the Yoke folk have to have boxing gloves and hands. Perhaps it's having to, it saves having to draw hands. In any case, what kind of hands would Neg have? Let's not start to think too much about Dizzy and how it lives and how it has arms and legs, because that's a bit weird. And these 16-bit versions that they reported in 1991, uh, the 8-bit versions appear to have come out in uh, November 1990. And we've not looked at the C64 version yet. We'll look at that a little bit later. Now, here on 16-bit versions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks across the screen, as opposed to 16 on the Spectrum Amstrad. You've got a smaller playfield, which does alter the gameplay, because the bandies can be on top of you a little bit quicker, gives you a little bit less space to move around in. It's a bit of a shame, actually, because I think the spacing on the Spectrum and Amstrad version is pretty spot on. Um, it, it just works well. On the 16-bit versions, there's no resolution limits. I'm not sure why we've ended up with a slightly smaller gameplay area than the Spectrum and Amstrad. All the levels are essentially the same. The game's clearly been designed out beforehand and then just hived off to the different coders um, to implement it. This Amiga version, and when we come to see the ST version, it reminds me a little bit of modern iPhones and Android devices where you've had an old game converted to the new system. They improve the graphics a bit and they, it just seems to lose a little bit in that translation. Over to the Atari ST now, and different music from the Spectral Amstrad. I um, don't know why they decided to do that, but uh, seems to be a slight change there. So the same intro graphics here. Um, and the game is essentially the same as the Amiga version. Uh, possibly a few less frames of animation. Um, possibly there. It feels a little bit jerkier, but then again, um, I was using a faster Amiga, so... It's hard to tell sometimes um, between the ST and Amiga when you've got these kind of variations in hardware, what, what. But my instinct says actually the ST version possibly uh, just been cut back a tiny amount. And that's a power up there that turns all the ice blocks on the screens to uh, fruit to collect, which can make things easier, can make things harder. Gives you more points, of course, because you get 50 points for each one, or if you're insane, um, you can try and collect them in order and get 100 points for each. But this game isn't about points. It's not really a high-score game. It's about getting to the end to rescue um, all the other yoke folk. And this is still on the Ice World um, Island, whatever it's called. Um, there are four islands in total. Enemies seem to follow a certain pattern, so they sometimes get stuck on the top left-hand side of the screen and things like that. And the timer works a little bit differently here on the 16 bits with that thing going across on the left-hand side with the icons disappearing. Harder to follow than the 8-bit versions as well, the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. Um, I much prefer having the kind of nice visible timer at the top of the screen. Now, we need to address the issue of the C64 version. So here it is, I'm running on my C64C. Quick Snacks, and we've got a different, created by Jason Benham. No mention of the Oliver Twins. 
No mention of the Oliver Twins at all. And this is all looking a bit 1983 on these menu screens here. Yeah, it literally looks like many games from 1983, 1984. This is 1990. Castle Vulture entering round one. What's this all about? First floor. There's Dizzy. Looks a bit weird. Big eyes. But it's clearly Dizzy. We've got a mallet, bomb, grenade, or fireball. This doesn't look much, much like the game we were playing earlier. And it's not. I don't know what was going on at Codemasters, but this is a completely different game. I've checked and double checked and triple checked. This is what Codemasters released as quick snacks on the C64. And it's a kind of almost something a bit like flicky because you. There's these little things that wander around the maze. You have to collect them and deliver them to a door while, whilst avoiding the bad guys. Which is a fun enough game in its own right. It looks a bit... Mm. But this is not Quick Snacks. So Quick Snacks is the game we've seen on the Spectrum, the Amstrad, the ST and the Amiga. And there's also a PC port as well, which we're not looking at today. This is a completely and utterly different game with Quick Snacks on the cover. I can only conclude that something went wrong with the delivery of Quick Snacks on the C64, and Codemasters has another game that had been sent in by somebody and said, right, we're going to reskin this as a Dizzy game and stick this out as Quick Snacks on the C64. There can be no other explanation because why would you do a completely different game? This game had it's clearly been submitted to Codemasters just as something for them to release by a coder. And it's ended up as Quick Snacks. It is perfectly fine as a game, but it is not Quick Snacks in any way, shape or form. This is like um, buying the latest FIFA game and finding it's Sonic the Hedgehog instead. Um, it's completely and utterly bizarre. I can't think of many examples. And this is the kind of thing Larry Bundy Jr., Guru Larry, is fantastic at finding out and researching of games where <laughs> the game is defined as quick snacks as we've seen as a pengo pengu clone and then on one format the c64 it gets released as something completely and utterly different do you check this game out by all means but it is not in any way shape or form quick snacks it's another game that's just had a dizzy sprite transplanted into it, presumably because Codemasters were desperate and needed to get a game out for whatever reason. I'd love to know why this has happened. It's fascinating. Poor C64 owners, I'm afraid you do not have a version of Quick Snacks. This is not Quick Snacks in any way, shape or form. Back to the normal world on the Specky, and this is the last bonus level of the Ice Island. And hopefully... We will have released Dylan. Oh, Denzel, you have a save Denzel. Denzel says, Yo, Dizzy, lay some skin on me, boy. That's the Island of Ice there. So we've got Cloud Cuckoo and Zack's Island to go. So let's go to Cloud Island, where all the ice blocks are clouds. You see what they did there? Ice World had ice blocks. Cloud World has clouds. That's the only difference. Over to the Atari ST, and we'll have a look at Cuckoo Island, where Grand Izzy is imprisoned. Now, on the 8 bits, you get uh, cuckoo clocks and things as your uh, things to push around. We're on the ST here, you get flower things as I'm missing something with some hands doesn't matter it plays pretty well as the level layouts get a little bit more complicated lost the life there and this is Zack's Island on the Amiga and it gets a little bit harder and a little bit darker we go from nice fluffy things to skulls and bones and things so back on the Amstrad CPC and I'm trying to complete the game no cheats being used at all uh, this is that's Cuckoo Island so I've saved Grand Dizzy thank you young Dizzy he says and now we're off the island of Zack. So I've got three lives. The game does give you bonus lives when you hit certain amounts of points. And I've picked up a bonus there. Oh, I've lost life. And you can see how the 
these, these larger levels impact the gameplay here on Spectrum and the Amstrad. Um, it gives you far larger area to play with and move things around. I much prefer it. This is much more a, a fun game on the Spectrum and Amstrad than it is on the 16 bits. It, it makes it more intricate. And you've got to work out your way across the level. It's less frantic, it's more thinking because you get more time and more space. I want to do is separate those goat things out so they don't... I don't want to kill them because they could respawn in the wrong place. I want to separate them out. Um, but I don't think they're going to do that. Sometimes the baddies get locked into this cycle. The AI is very, very simple. Not a criticism. I just want to keep those two out of the way and trapped. It means I only have two of the goat things to worry about. Four goats? You'd think it was a Jeff Minter game, wouldn't you? Three of these melons to go. There's a 30 mile an hour limit thing down there. That uh, slows the baddies down if I want to use that. And there's various power ups. Um, you've seen the one that you can eat the baddies. There's also one that stops you wrapping around on the screen like I just did there. Um, there's a poison one that slows you down as well. On to the bonus level. This should be the last level of the game. A bit complicated. I'm not going to bother trying to do it because, hopefully, in a second, I will have completed the game. Bonus over. You don't lose any lives when that happens. That's absolutely fine. If you, get, you don't, don't want to do a bonus level, you don't have to. You have saved Daisy. Daisy says, Dizzy, my hero. Congratulations, you have rescued the Dizzy mob. How now they can have their holiday and be refreshed, ready for their next tour. This is the first we ever heard about the Dizzy Mob being a band. How this works, I don't know, but never mind. I think Quick Snacks is absolutely brilliant, especially on the Amstrad CPC and Sinclair Spectrum. It's a wonderful take on Pengu. It's fun. It plays well. It looks attractive. It sounds good. It's a decent concept. It's well implemented. C64 version. That is not Quick Snacks. It, it might say Quick Snacks on the box, on the tape, in the instructions. It is not Quick Snacks. It's a completely, totally, and utterly different game. It's a fun game. I would love to know what it was originally called and the backstory of why this ended up on the C64 as a completely different game. But there you go. It's not what the other versions are. It, for whatever reason, Codemasters have taken a game and stuck a dizzy sprite in and gone there you go that's quick snacks on the c64 incidentally the reviewers weren't particularly keen on this game at the time of what i've seen they didn't actually notice that this game was completely different from the spectrum and amstrad versions between the st amiga amstrad and spectrum versions i do prefer the amstrad and spectrum that larger screen that larger play area really adds to the game inexplicably there's no reason why the ST and Amiga versions have a smaller play area. I don't know. It makes the game more frantic. I don't think it makes the game more fun. For me, the Amstrad CPC version is the absolute pick of the crop. It looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, and plays really, really well. And the ultimate testament to how good this game is, is a little while ago I had some friends visit with their kids, and we kept their under 10s occupied with quick snacks, running one off Amstrad CPC 464 for ages. If it can occupy the kids of 2017 and keep them amused for quite a long time, then for me, that's a game that really stands up well. Quick Snacks, it's brilliant. <laughs>